This is video 69 on a MicroPython embedded solution. ESP32 P4 support is included in MicroPython 1.27.0 recent release. In this video, we take a first look at the generic MicroPython features we can use with ESP32 P4. We will use our standard video review by providing live demonstrations, our research, and code. Please let us know in the comments if you like this example, or let us know if you have suggestions to improve it. Our test rig is an affordable Raspberry Pi lookalike, the WaveShare ESP32 P4 module dev kit, wired to our standard ILI9341 integrated display. As this channel covers multiple small system solutions over time, please subscribe to stay informed and click like as that really helps. Looking for a suitable ESP32-P4 board, we found the WaveShare ESP32-P4 module dev kit, which is available at many online retailers. The board combines an Ethernet adapter, four USB ports, a plentiful 16 megabyte flash and 32 megabyte PS RAM, along with an integrated ESP32-C6 module, that provides Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and BLE. Finally, it includes a 40-pin GPIO header, along with multiple useful devices and port headers. My device costs $29, making it an affordable alternative to the small computers like Orange Pi, Raksha, and Raspberry Pi. As ESP32 P4 support in MicroPython is recent, we will investigate it using the standard MicroPython firmware from micropython.org. So after flashing the firmware, we have three simple goals. We will see how easy it is to use Ethernet, the ease in which to configure Wi-Fi, and can we perform simple graphics on our LIL9341 board. For each of our goals, we have very brief video demonstrations so we are including them in line with each research topic. As always, the test programs are provided at our GitHub site. Our firmware we obtained at the micropython.org's download website. We searched for ESP32-P4. There are three available firmwares. We chose the generic P4 firmware with the external C6 support. We used the suggested ESP tool available from Python to deploy the firmware to the board. Next, we visit the manufacturer's wiki site. WaveShare is very good about including a lot of helpful documents, information, and code examples. From their wiki site, we got a useful pinout diagram. Their examples only covered Arduino and platform, but their site says they provide additional updates from time to time. Our first goal is the ease of configuring the Ethernet connection. We got code from the MicroPython online documentation website, but now we needed some details about PHY and MDC. Going back to the WaveShare wiki, we found a web page with the details we needed. Now let's look at the network demo. All right, we're gonna begin looking at the, the code for each of the examples. And the first is test underscore network. As you can see, test underscore network is similar to the code that we showed in the uh, slide. Here we've got the pins defined as we found from the WaveShare wiki. And notice it's using the PHY device of IP 101 and the PH address of one. Okay, let's run the program. All right, we got the ethernet IP address. If you're running this for the first time, you may need to run this program twice. First time, so it often will give you just the zeros. If you do that, just run it again and it'll give you an IP address. Now let's look at a Wi-Fi configuration. We return to the MicroPython online document and copy pasted the, co the code there. As there are no pin definitions, let's just try the code to connect. All right, let's clear the screen and run the next demo. The next demo is test underscore Wi-Fi. And let's look at the code. Here's the code. 
that we got from the MicroPython website. There is the need for a secret file that you will load onto the flash drive and give it your SSID and your password. But other than that, you could run this code as is. Let's give it a, a run. All right, and it's gotten to the Wi-Fi address. For the graphics, we turned to GitHub, as we knew there were several simple graphic repositories with an ILI 9341 driver that did not need the LVGL library. We found a suitable site with R Dagger's GitHub website. He had the display, touch drivers, as well as several example programs. Initially, we used consecutive pins, but the WaveShare wiki cautioned us to avoid certain pins. Here's how we finally wired the display and touch. The WaveShare site does not mention pins for hardware SPI, so we set up the device using the MicroPython soft SPI, which allows any pins. Notice we reused the SPI pins for both display and touch. Our dagger makes it easy to run his example. His programs predefine the display and touch pins. We updated each of the test programs with our pins and changed the import for SPI to the soft SPI library. We will demonstrate a few examples. All right, let's clear the screen. Let's look at the code first. In our first example, we're going to look at demo underscore color underscore palette. And we're going to make similar changes to each of the four demos. First, we're going to add or re replace SPI with soft SPI. Next, we're going to look for the author's uh, definitions for SPI display. Here, I've just commented them out, and I replaced them with my definitions. Well, now that we have the pins defined for, the, for SPI display, uh, we can just run the graphics program. All right, and let's turn on our graphics display. As you can see, it's filled the screen with colored circles, and each circle, is, uh, each row of, of the circles is a different color. All right, let's hit enter. That'll end the demo. Let's clear the screen. The next demo is demo underscore clear. We'll run it. In this demo, the screen is cleared and a color is displayed. The amount of time it took to display that particular color on the screen is displayed in the shell. Okay, that's the demo. Let's hit enter. And we'll clear the screen and get ready for the next demo. The next demo is demo underscore fonts underscore rotated. And I chose this just to show text fonts as well as different rotations. The different fonts are available from our dagger in a folder called fonts. So he gives you a lot of capabilities to display uh, different fonts with different uh, types of font. All right, let's press enter to move on to the next demo. We'll clear the screen. Now we're going to run the demo called demo underscore touch. Uh, before I run it, let's just talk about the code. So we're looking at demo underscore touch, and we've we've put in the soft SPI as before. And let's look at the definitions. As before, I've commented out his values and put in mine. 
So notice that for touch, we're using a specific CS pin and an uh, IRQ pin. And then here you can see where we've defined the display. And we've defined the SPI for the display and the SPI for the touch. Notice that the touch is using the same SPI, but at a different baud rate. So the changes I, I did was to modify this file called xpt2046.py. Put this out on our computer so we can see what it looks like. What I did is you'll see in this file, there are settings to calibrate the X and Y coordinates. And I commented out on row 22, his values, and put in mine. So if your display, when, when you touch your screen and you're not quite getting the X and Y as you need, uh, you can make changes there. Additionally, out in the touch demo program, uh, there's a spot where you could set whether the Y needs to be flipped or the X needs to be flipped or whether it needs to be swapped. In my case, um, I flipped the Y, the X, and I swapped the X and Y values uh, as I touched the screen. So you can comment out these in case you, know, you don't need to mirror the values uh, or swap the values. Uh, but that was what I had to do to get my display to work. I, I had to do all three. All right, let's go back and and do the demo now. Right now, we're going to touch the screen. So you can see I'm getting a little bit of inaccuracy, but for the most part, it, it puts a dot basically where I touch the screen. And so we have a working touch screen. And that's the demos of the graphics and the, the code. In summary, in this video, we demonstrated examples for each of our goals. We discussed the WaveShare board capabilities. We presented our research. We discussed the test rig wiring, and we walked through the code. Before we end, we also ran an I2C test scan and found the address, which is for the ES8311 codec device on the WaveShare board. Hopefully, we can make another video about interfacing to the audio devices. And finally, we hope you found this discussion on MicroPython on the WaveShare P4 module dev kit helpful and can find a way to incorporate it into one of your efforts. Thank you for listening.